the first thing I ask when uh, we're talking about functions defined by integrals is I always draw up um, this. I will define g by being the integral of f from 0 to x. And then I draw a graph of f and I ask uh, where is this function g increasing and where is it decreasing? Uh, before I get into that though, I just want to point out that the reason that I use t instead of x is because it would be improper to use x. X is the only true variable of the function. It's the only input. The t's, that's just a variable of integration. So, okay, where is this function increasing? Where is it decreasing? Well, if you start from zero and you go this way, it appears that as x gets larger, you're gaining area. And so as x goes from here to here, um, g is increasing. And then from here to here, g is decreasing because it's the net signed area. You're losing area as you go past 1 into this region here. And then you're gaining again. If you just kind of look, look at it that way, it's fairly intuitive. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, if you buy into that, let's look at a sign chart for g prime of x. Okay, we said that g was increasing here, so g prime is going to be positive here, and g was decreasing inside here, so it'll be negative there, and then g was increasing here again, so positive again. And so it's going to be zero there and zero there. And if you look at this, uh, you'll notice that the sign chart for g prime closely models uh, the behavior of f of t, right? g prime is positive wherever f is positive, and it's negative wherever f is negative. Uh, and there is a definite correspondence there. As it turns out, it appears from the sign chart that the derivative of big G is in little f, and that's what it is. This is the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus part two. If you have a function defined by an integral, then its derivative is simply equal to whatever the integrand is with x in there, right? x, because when it is a function of x, when you differentiate it, there's going to be an x inside there. It's really just that simple. To d differentiate a function defined by an integral, you just drop the integral symbol and dt, just plug in x. Got a couple examples of that. Um, it actually works independent of what the, the lower bound is, too, by the way, just as long as it's constant. Whenever you differentiate it, it's just going to be, well, here you go. Um, the derivative of this function with respect to x, according to the rule, is just going to be the sine of x squared. All that you got to do is plug in x wherever there's a t, and the rule goes just that way. Uh, the one slight hitch here is what if uh, the upper bound is a constant and the lower bound is x? What do you do in that case? Well, it, it, it doesn't follow the, the rule exactly uh, because the fundamental theorem said that the lower bound had to be constant. But what you can do in this case is you can put the x up here and you can put the constant down there and by doing so that reverses the uh, sign. Then you can apply the rule directly to this. And the derivative of this integral would just be minus x over x squared plus 1. That's it. Uh, here's another one that's one step up from that. What if instead the upper bound is a function of x rather than just x by itself. Well, you would, uh, you might suspect that you could apply the rule straight up and just say g prime of x would just be, to fill that in, you have 3x squared plus 3x squared, wherever there's a t, I put 3x squared, you do 3x squared. And that would be a good guess, but not completely correct uh, because g is, if you notice, it's a composition of functions. All right, the outer function is the integral itself, and the inner function is whatever is up there as the upper bound. So uh, being a composition, you have to do the chain rule. So it's going to be the derivative of the outer uh, function, the integral, which is this part, but you have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, 3x squared. So where you have this, this is correct, but it's only half of it. You have to multiply again by the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x. And that's how you, you handle it if, if there is a function up top. Uh, I guess the last one, as pretty much about as complicated as it gets, is that uh, both the upper and lower bounds are functions. In this case, you could rewrite it using properties of integrals. You could break this up judiciously and say uh, that this integral could be 
say the integral from x squared to any constant, t sine t dt, plus the integral from that same constant to 3x of t sine t dt. So now you see this as the sum of two separate integrals, which we know how to handle because we just did the examples. Um, what's going to happen here is uh, we have to switch the uh, boundaries. So that's going to be from a to x squared, and that's going to change it to the sign. Then you can just apply the chain rule as usual. So the derivative of this part will just be x squared sine of x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Don't forget the negative out front. Plus, uh, you just plug it in, 3x sine 3x, and multiply that part of it by 3. That's all there is to it. If you, if you f forget this rule, uh, the one way that I remember it is to refer to the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And you can um, do this so long as you know how to anti-differentiate the function that they give you. To differentiate a function defined by an integral is to differentiate, well see, this according to the first part of the fundamental theorem is the anti-derivative of little f, which we write as big F, evaluated from a to x. And this is nothing more than the derivative with respect to x. Big F of x minus big F of a. And so this we can handle. The, the derivative of big F is just the thing that we started with. And the derivative of a is just, of, of f of a is just zero because it is a constant, and in the end, you get the same thing anyway.